Okay, I bet you've never seen this before because as far as I know, there's only two of them in the world. This is a Yeti 129 SS, that's the skinny track, stretched out to a long track. Come on, look at that nice skinny track there, full length, and apparently this thing absolutely rips. I also wanna show you this, the Selkirk engine guard for temperature management. Looks pretty slick, very nice. That is no way to treat a company vehicle. So I get my foot right up here under the handlebar. What we have here is another bomber, bomber day. Okay, that guy who has that crazy bike, Mike, what you need to know is that he's gone to all kinds of different bikes. So he's had a 650 Husaberg with nitrous, uh, 300 uh, fuel injected, uh, all the different types of Yeti tracks, and even a Mako 700 two-stroke. So this guy is the master tinkerer, and uh, I think he's found the perfect bike now. That's pretty good in there. Look, here comes Stinky. just told me that map two on the four strokes has more power. I've been running map one all season. What a dummy. I thought it was that dum dum, it was this dum dum. Ah.
got brakes today. That's amazing. Unit Riders Edge fixed my brakes. Not in the heat right now. That was beautiful. Oh, 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 boom. Oh, man. My <laughs> oh, Mikey. What have you done? <laughs> this shouldn't be hard. No, just a lift up. Did a bit of a pinball. Let's hit it! Take you to get out of <laughs> dog paddle. You can ride out of that. Yeah. I probably could have made it, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna impact. Yeah, how hard are you gonna hit whatever's made that hump? Well done. <laughs> Got some good explosions there. Awesome. bike up there nice to hear from you Andrew I just hit a ravine right as you were reporting that and got myself stuck well, things look a little bit better got a ways to dig it out I think I spin it down there hopefully go out with gravity one thing I was just thinking of was see these gloves here they were starting to get kind of uh, weathered I guess they'd get wet then they'd freeze and so what I did is I, I treated the leather again now they're fantastic, which is great because these are really expensive gloves and I was getting sad that I was going to have to buy new ones when really I just had to retreat the leather. Awesome. Okay, all better now. Time to go. Oh, yeah. Wow, you win. This is going to be a job, folks. Big job. So Andrew, you say there's a creek down here, and if you stand anywhere in there, you just disappear? Yeah, I went up to like there. Ooh. Below my peg. Or you're by yourself. A little scary. A little scary, so we're gonna have to dig out a lot there. Get the long slings on, try to burp it. Burp, burp, burp. Dig it out. Well, I gotta give it to you. So far, this is the best stuck of the year for sure. Yeah. Check out this angle. My feet are above the handlebars. So that just goes to show how far down it is, and I'm still Four or five feet below the where we have to go. One, two, three. Okay, <laughs> okay we're gonna give it a good tuck here. Ah. <laughs> There's one. So this is my bike. 129 SS, so the skinny track on a 450. FC 450. This is Mike's bike, which is going to let me ride now. 2019 FC 450. 129 SS stretched out to a 137. So I have an extra, I don't know, four or five inches of track there. I'm going to see how it goes. Look what else I've got. I've got a trail pack here. It's on GPS mode. That is a good looking screen. 
and apparently I'm going to get a yellow light if I hit 210 and a red light if I hit 230. That's the way Mike's programmed it. Okay, I gotta show you guys something once I stand this up. Yeah! Uh, come on, baby. Yeah! Yeah! Okay. The reason I crashed is because of this. I couldn't turn the bars far enough to match the lean that I had. See all that ice in there? These bars. I can only turn the ski slightly to the left because it's all built up and I've never seen that before. Maybe it's the snow conditions. Maybe there's some Mike has some stuff in there that's Maybe it's because you're a manimal. Maybe because I'm a manimal, as Andrew says. I'll take that. I'll take that all day long. You guys see that? There. That's the big ball of snow. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna chip it away with. Okay, all better. Time to go. You ready? Yeah. Let's see. On my 129 SS, this might have been a little bit of a tough get go. But I'm trusting this 137 SS just have the flotation we need. No, it doesn't. It's longer, but not that much crazier. This is not a bad stuck at all. I'll be personally badly stuck if I step down in there in that tree well. We're getting better and better at burping the bikes out. One of the things we do well, the single's in the front. The driver, clutch in, rev it up a fair bit, watch the guy pulling, huh, huh, and then let out the clutch. And it's, you want the engine to kind of bog down a bit and get that traction and climb out, not spin out and just dig more. Donkey pull. <laughs> unga bunga. Unga bunga. After riding Mike's 137 SS, his unique own creation, I think it's probably the best snow bike ever. You can get around with a bit more confidence than a 129 SS, but you still have that skinny track, which really allows it to stay nimble and fun and playful. I think it's awesome, Mike. Way to go. Very nice. Only a $2,000 upgrade plus a bunch of your own time. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs>